Hey guys, Erica here with Climate Ready Home, and today's video is going to be covering how you can have a raised bed on concrete. This is especially important for people who live in apartments or just have a really small yard, but they still want to grow their own food. I think growing food is absolutely important. It reduces your carbon footprint, but beyond that, it's just healthier for you. Um, now, I've always lived in apartments. This is like the first time I've actually had a place to live that has a yard where I can grow food um, you know, in the ground, um, but I still want to walk you guys through how I deal with um, raised garden beds on concrete because there are a few things you have to think about. Things that if you don't do, it's just going to cause headache later on. Now the second part of this video is actually going to cover firescaping. Because I live in a high fire risk area, there are some things we have to do to ensure that we don't catch our house on fire, <laughs> there's a wildfire, wild we want to prepare our home from burning down. So that's going to be part two. That'll be coming out next week. And yeah, for right now, let's just get started. So this is my container. It's a big old box. It is made out of untreated wood. It is on wheels and I'll explain why later. Um, every single container absolutely needs some drainage holes and I have three drainage holes here. Um, so this tutorial is not going to be how to build a box like this but how to prepare it for being on concrete. So let's get started. So the materials required include some metal mesh, um, heavy duty painting uh, liner, I believe it's called, a staple gun and some drip pans for the water. And you, I want three because I have three holes. And I will be posting all of the links in the description box below so you guys can just quickly see exactly the products that I'm using. So step one is to line the inside of the box with this heavy duty plastic. This is gonna keep moisture off of the wood which is gonna extend the lifetime of your container. But it's also gonna keep the soil contained to just the container. When you build wooden boxes like this, there are going to be gaps all over the place. There's no way that you can build something like this that's airtight unless you do some kind of sealant on the inside. So this plastic is going to keep all of the dirt in the box and it's going to keep it from spilling all over your patio. So the first place you want to lay your plastic is near the drainage holes because you want to secure that first. And so what you want to do is lay the plastic over the holes and stick it through the hole and then use a staple gun to staple all around the hole just to keep it secure. It doesn't need to be like super secure, it's just kind of like temporarily secure. Um, and then go ahead and do that for the rest of the drainage holes. And then I would suggest getting a bunch of rocks to hold the plastic in place around the perimeter of the box so you can move on to the next step. And the next step is more stapling. So you're gonna staple the top part of the box. <laughs> um, now you don't want to pull the plastic very tight because if there's any space between the plastic and the wood, when you throw the dirt into the, the container, you're gonna tear the plastic. Um, I do that every single time I, I make one of these. This is like my fourth box like this. Um, and I always forget to make sure to leave a lot of slack. And then you wanna cut around the like top of the box um, in the general area where you think the soil level is going to be. It's okay to do it a little bit higher because once you have the soil in there, you can come back through with the scissors and then just cut lower. It's no big deal. So here's what my box looks like after all the things, so pretty. Um, now none of the drainage holes actually have any holes. I just pulled the plastic through the holes. So the next step is I want to pull that plastic out of the hole and then make my cut. But you wanna make the cut so that the plastic is still able to be pulled through the hole. The reason is, is when, you, when, you, um, when the water is draining out of the hole, you don't want any of that wood in the hole to be touching water, if that makes sense. You want the water to go directly into the pan. You don't want it to like seep into the bottom of the, um, the box because this is gonna be like a really um, weak point in your box um, because if you, let's say you're watering too much and there's a lot of water in the bottom of the box, when it starts to drain out of those holes, it could really soak up the bottom of the, the box. Wow, how many times have I said the box? So on top of these drainage holes, you want to add mesh. So what you want to do is cut a few squares out of your, your mesh, and I'll post the link down below. You can also reuse this mesh for updating your, your, your vents in your garage and your attic to be wildfire well ready. Um, but anyways, cut little squares enough to cover the holes. This is going to keep dirt from leaving your, your box from those drainage holes. And then you want to put the mesh on top of the holes and then use a staple gun to, to keep everything like in place. Definitely would recommend gloves here. These are just gardening gloves, but um, any type of gloves would work. I did not use gloves the first time around and I cut up my hand, so please wear gloves. Now once you've done that with the rest of your drainage holes, um, then you're going to want to get the water trays, water drip pans, I don't know what these are actually called, but you can get them at um, the gardening section at your like big box 
store, I guess. Um, now I'll put them underneath where the holes are, and this is just going to catch any excess water that you that may come out. The key too is to not overwater your containers so that you don't have to keep dumping these. Um, if you do have a heavy rain, you're probably going to have to come through and dump those just to make sure you don't have any standing water where mosquitoes can lay their eggs and make little mosquito babies. So now it's time for the soil. Now you don't need to fill the entire thing up with soil. You can actually add logs and sticks and things that decompose in the bottom of the soil that are cheap or maybe free for you. Um, that way you don't have to spend all that money up front dumping soil into here. Um, another thing you can do is you can add rocks, but if you're following this tutorial to fire escape this later on, then I would not recommend adding rocks because it adds too much weight and then I will explain that in the next video. But for me, I'm adding the whole soil to the entire thing simply because I'm going to be planting shrubs in here and I want that that soil depth for the shrubs. Now the last uh, step here is to start to trim around the perimeter of the raised bed so that you don't see that plastic popping through. Remember I said that you don't have to cut the, the plastic you know very low you can cut it kind of high because you're going to come through again and you're going to cut it at the exact level that the soil is at so just pull some of the soil away from the edge and then cut with your scissors and then you can put the soil back on the box it's not going to do a lot of damage if just a little bit of the soil is touching the box it's not a big deal um, but this way you can have a nice clean look for the top of your your raised bed and here we go this is what it looks like after you've cut all the plastic and I think it looks really nice you can't even tell there's any plastic in there um, which is you know nice no one wants to see a bunch of plastic sticking through uh, now before I finish off this video I do want to touch on one thing that I forgot to mention now I didn't mention it earlier but my container is raised I have it on wheels for fire escaping reasons and I'll explain why in the next video but you don't have to have wheels if you don't live in a fire prone area you can have it just be with like stationary um, legs. But that, I just wanted to point that out before I finish the video. I hope that has helped. Um, that's all I have to say for today. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And stay tuned, next week we'll be coming out with a video about firescaping with this container. So bye guys, thanks so much.